Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Praxis 2, the Society of Conscious Thoughts Battleship's second tier variant. This is one of those ships that I think a lot of people just kind of ignore and let it pass unnoticed, and it was one of those ships that now that I'm skilling back into battleships and large weapons, because what other choice do I have, I thought I'd give this one a go and see how it actually flies, and you know what? I'm not entirely disappointed in it, and hopefully today in this video I can show you what it's about, talk about different ways you might want to fit it, show you how I've been using it, and see if it's something that you might be interested in. Now if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and help me keep making content like this, you can head across to Patreon and pledge to support there, that's patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie, every pledge means the world to me and every dollar really helps, thank you so much. Anyway, with all that said and done then, let's jump right into talking about the Praxis 2. Now the first question that you're likely to have regarding the Praxis 2 is how do I even get one of these because it's not on the ship tree, you won't find it in the market, it's a bit of a tricky one to get. Well, sort of, it's a bit of an expensive one to get in the short term, but over the long term you should eventually reach it anyway. What I'm alluding to here, if we go into the event tab and then scroll all the way down to the bottom here to the Omega special deal, you've got all of these different tabs. The longer that you are having combo Omega active, the more of these upgrades you will get. Unfortunately, mine is blanked out here, but the Praxis 2 is the ship that you will get here for having, I think it's 900 days of Combo Omega active on your account. Now, you could just buy 900 days outright. That's going to be slightly insane. Obviously, you'll get 30 days Combo Omega if you win one of my giveaways. That won't initially count. You will have to buy Combo Omega, but if you won a 30-day Combo Omega, then you buy a Combo Omega. That will trigger a full 60 days for these. For some reason, the sort of the developer added combo omega doesn't seem to trigger these but that's how you're going to get it and yes 900 days is a long time but ultimately for those of us who have been around for a long time in the game we're all sort of reaching that point now anyway plus other people are you know going to be looking at these and just sort of pumping a little bit of uh, omega in there just to get it now let's actually have a look at the ship itself. I'm going to have to scroll down here because as I said it's not in the ship tree at all. We do have to go to the bottom of its extensive list of abilities to have a look at it here in the flesh. Now the original ship itself, I love how the Praxis looks, like the basic Praxis is such a cool looking ship and the Praxis too does actually somehow end up looking even cooler. I love that slate grey, red and gold sort of detailing on it. It's a really pretty looking ship and I love how menacing that sort of circular cross is as well. There is the Afterglow of Death nanocore as well which you should have had ahead of time because that comes just after the Praxis 1. I'm going to be showing this ship without the nanocore just to give you a basic idea, then we'll fit the nanocore afterwards and show how that changes things. And there is also a sleeper nanocore for it as well. I think the Afterglow of Death is probably the coolest looking one, and we'll discuss that more a bit later. If we're to look at the attributes and fittings here for the Praxis 2, you'll immediately notice something unusual. Four drone tubes that can launch small, medium, large, and sentry drones, five high slots, four mids, six lows, and three of each of the uh, the rig types. Plus, we've got a decent enough 8,750 megawatts of power grid. Now, I've been playing around with this a lot, and that power grid seems to be really quite comfortable. I've not even come close to maxing that out, but then again, I am using very specific fits, I guess. You might find ways to. The interesting point is that this ship gets bonuses to all weapon systems, including drones, which makes it kind of like a rattlesnake in that it does dual damage with drones and with other weaponry. We'll talk more about that later, but just be aware that you are going to be getting four large drone tubes and five high slots, along with four mids, which is pretty good for versatility, and six lows, which is not the tankiest you could get, but does do the job quite nicely. 1,200 cubic meters of cargo space, 76,312 defense. Again, this is not the tankiest battleship out there, but it's not exactly squishy either, with 17,500 across the board in all three versions, which means as you start training up battleship um, defense upgrade, that will push up even further. There's no real dis decision here as to, there's nothing to say that this should be shield or armor tanked. You can kind of tank it either way, depending on your content, um, which which is another sort of versatility feather in the Praxis 2's camp. So versatility, you'll notice, is a running theme on this ship. 
The capacitor banks, pretty okay, 9,300 gigajoules, long capacitor recharge time, um, but, you know, decent, it, the capacitor's not bad, is what I'm trying to say. It's not the worst capacitor out there. There are better, but it's pretty solid, and it will support shield tanking quite comfortably. When we look at maximum lock targets, it's like most battleships, it's got eight. Signature radius is fairly large, 440 meters. Scan resolution, however, is a little bit higher than most other battleships, 170 meters. Sensor strength, 22, does nothing. Um, flight velocity is incredibly slow, as is the inertia and mass modifier. The agility of this ship is just awful. Warp speed, slow. It's slow and lumbering, which is kind of disappointing, and this is the point of a lot of what the Praxis was about in EVE Online. In fact, if you looked at the Society of Conscious Thought ships there, they were incredibly slow moving ships, so that low flight velocity makes sense, but they were also incredibly agile. They could turn and warp quite quickly, and I really wish that the Praxis had this in EVE Echoes as well, that it just achieved warp that little bit faster. Being quick to warp but incredibly slow on grid was kind of what made the Society of Conscious Thought ships what they are. Right, now deep breath, let's have a look at the trait description, because there's a lot going on here. First of all, the roll bonuses. 25% increase to large turret damage, or 25% increase to large missile and torpedo damage. That means your high slots can be any weapon system in the game, and the Praxis is going to get bonuses from it. Indeed, you also get a 50% increase to drone damage, which means those four drones are actually acting as if they are six. That's already really, really nice. So if you have drone skills, and you're going to be using drones and a high slot, this can actually put out a fair amount of DPS. Unfortunately, it's not as much as some other battleships. Again, I am jumping ahead of myself here. What sells the Praxis is that versatility. Obviously, you may have been using lasers or missiles with drones in the past, um, but this will actually give you a reason to maybe even use cannons um, or railguns, whatever the heck you fancy. Whatever you are skilled into with large turrets or large missiles, using the high slots and then put drones in those drone tubes. We do then have a 25% reduction to resonance simulator minimum scan radius and narrow resonance scanner scan radius as well. This means the Praxis is not actually a terrible ship for scanning. Now you're not going to want to take it out there exploring and it's probably not the kind of ship you're going to want to go roaming with, but things like era rifts that need to be scanned down or inde indeed um, overseer dead spaces the Praxis actually has enough mid slots to comfortably fit a blue scanner in the middle and just occasionally scan for those things without needing to rig for it, which is surprisingly useful and opens up a different type of playstyle, I think. Not a particularly popular playstyle by any stretch, but a playstyle nonetheless. Then we have all the advanced weapon operation bonuses. Depending on which weapon system you are trained in, you'll get all of these nice little bonuses as well. So if you're advanced large laser operation, then 5% large laser damage, 25%, and a 50% total large laser capacitor need reduction, which is really nice. It's going to do a lot of damage with those lasers um, and reduce the amount of capacitor required to, to fund those, as it were. Do be aware there's no tracking there. You're probably going to, going to want to go beams for a bit longer range with this. Um, although that will then interfere with the drones because this ship does not get drone range bonuses. So brawling, I feel honestly, is the way forward. And with no tracking bonus to small uh, to large beams, that can be problematic. Advanced Large Missile Torpedo Operation, 5% Large Torpedo Missile Damage, 5% Explosion Velocity, so that's 25% of each of those, and that 25% Explosion Velocity is actually really nice. If you're using Large Rapids, that is just amazing application that this ship will give you, but I actually would go for Large Missiles, and they apply just fine. Admittedly, though, I have kind of rigged a bit of Explosion um, Radius in there as well, but that Explosion Velocity bonus is super useful, and if you do go for a brawling fit with rapids and um, it can actually apply its damage astonishingly well obviously 25% missile torpedo damage and then 25% again here for advanced large missile torpedo does do some pretty good output as well nothing overly crazy but enough that you can do some content with it large railgun operation at advanced gives you again 25% damage and a 25% tracking speed. That tracking speed actually really helps. This is going to be a brawling ship because of that drone range. So if you happen to have large railguns and large drones skilled, then putting large snub-nosed and some large combat drones in there as well does work wonders and gives you some really potent capabilities. If you did want to snipe, then obviously going for something like your uh, large rifled railguns and then some sentry drones isn't going to work as well because you're going to have to really rig for the additional range on the drones to make that worthwhile. 
and I just don't see the point. Go for the brawler, go for uh, large snubs. Advanced large cannon operation gives you an additional 10% large cannon accuracy fall off um, and 5% cannon damage. So again, another 25% cannon damage and 50% accuracy fall off. That works so well with large auto cannons. You can orbit at say 30 to 40 kilometers, keep your drones in range depending on what you've got there. I think it's about 34, 35 kilometers I'm at. So I orbit at like 35 kilometers with large cannons and away you go. Those drones rip things apart, your cannons track really quite well, and you've got enough mid slots that you can afford to put some webs in there as well. Advanced large drone operation, as I've mentioned here, we've got a 5% increase to drone damage, 25% there, on top of the 50% for the roll bonus, followed with a 10% or 50% drone optimal range. Now that does help, especially with the recent changes that allow you to set your drone's orbit range, it means you can keep your drones a little bit further away and they'll track a little bit better, because the lack of application on this is definitely noticeable. Finally, then we have Advanced Battleship Command Bonus. That'll give you a 5% increase to scan resolution and 5% flight velocity. Now, the 5% flight velocity, 25% flight velocity is not much. You're looking at another quarter on top of 90, so that's what off the top of my head, 45. 22.5 so you're looking at about 112.5 meters per second standard there obviously then the actual bonuses from the skittle itself but the 25 percent additional scan resolution is a game changer on this it means the praxis 2 locks on remarkably quickly even to some of the smallest ships out there which can be really really potent but anyway, with all of that said and done, having a look at that versatility, let's move into fitting and talk about how I fitted it and how you might fit it as well. So let's look at fitting the Praxis 2 then. Now, I've mentioned that ultimately the big advantage of the Praxis 2 is its versatility. You can fit any high slot you like in there, plus you can have drones in the tubes there as well. This does, however, mean that if you want to get the most out of the Praxis 2, you are going to need to have large drone skills in order to maximize the drones and large weapon skills of your choice as well. That makes it particularly expensive to skill into if you want to actually get some decent numbers out of it. Now, I've been a bit of an idiot. I enjoy flying the Praxis 2. I love how it looks, and I love that I've managed to make it actually somewhat viable. I've spent a lot of ISK kitting this out, probably a lot more than I should have, especially on the rigs, as we'll talk about in just a moment. For me, though, I have large missile skills, and I've got large drone skills. I fly a rattlesnake otherwise, um, and certainly that means I've gone for large missile launches here in the tops. You could go rapids. Definitely, you could go rapids. That will save you some money on the rig as we'll talk about in a moment, but for me, I quite like the DPS and the range versatility of these, but Rapids will definitely get the job done. You just have a slightly lower DPS, but better application, if that makes sense. Looking at the stats though, Explosion Velocity 86.25 meters per second and Explosion Radius 214 aren't terrible. They will apply damage well enough, especially if I web a target um, and the drones will do the rest on the very smallest ships out there. Again though, this is a personal preference thing, you can quite handily swap these out for large rapids if that's what you prefer. Because we're going to be brawling, we are going to want a couple of large energy Nosferatus. I've gone for two Imperial Navy because, my goodness, the prices that people are charging for some of the higher tier ones just are not worth it. The energy transference here is more than sufficient to keep me at a decent cap stability here. You can see that's two uh, Imperial Navy large energy Nosferatus keeping me at very high capacitor stability as long as those are running. The two mid slots, I've gone for a public fleet stasis web of fires. Again, you could go predators here um, to get that little bit of extra range. It does actually make a difference, that little bit of extra range. But for me, the Republic fleets are just about holding out fine enough. I web anything that gets close and then my drones go crazy. Now I'm carrying just Mark 9s here. You can obviously go up to the Republic fleet and Imperial Navy and stuff like that. I tend to have a fleet of Berserkers and uh, Praetors, but again, you can kind of mix and match depending on what damage type you want to do and what enemies you're up against. I do actually have four Praetors and four Berserkers. When I'm going up against the shields, it will mainly be Praetors that I use and then I'll try and bring two back if it's a fight that I want to do quickly. But for the most part, I just send out two and two and it will do enough damage to rip through things that way. Now, in regards to tanking, simple here, C-type large uh, shield booster followed by C-type adaptive invulnerability fields and a reactive shield hardener. 
Now it's worth noting that in this kind of situation, for Angel having going up against Angel Rats, having two reds is better than a red and a yellow. There's no two ways about it because the Angels do three types of damage from their cannons and four types from their missiles, which means the yellows do get a little bit confused. If you're going up against either Galente or Amar, where you've got a single damage type, well, sorry, double damage types um, for railguns and for lasers, then it's worth going red and yellow to start with. After that, add in the yellow after two reds. You can even go three reds, um, and that will do pretty much the same kind of job at this point in time um, due to how the stacking penalties work for shield resistances. Anyway, so I've gone for two reds and a yellow. You can go for three reds or red and, well, two reds and a yellow. It's going to be two reds and a yellow, even if you're up against Galente and Amar, because you're going to go red, then yellow is the best one to go for after that, and you can't fit two yellows, so you go for a second red. Either way, two reds and a yellow is what we're going to be looking at. Maybe three reds if you're in angel space. Then I've gone two Epithem C-type Ballistic Control Systems. Why did I go those and not drone damage? Because, well, have a look at the chart there. You can see offensive missiles, 1,108 compared to drones, 409. I'd rather have a boost of a larger number than a smaller number, considering it's the same percentile boost. So yeah, that's what I've gone for there, the, uh, the uh, Ballistic Control Units there, to give myself some additional DPS from those missiles when I need. Now this is where things get slightly crazy for me. I went integrated on this one, and yes, I am on the live server. So here in the engineering, I went for universal 2P engineering integrated modules, capacitor control circuit, semiconductor memory cell. That pushed me to capacitor stable quite comfortably um, with one Nosferatu, but I've put two on there for the time being anyway, just to prove that you can get it really high on cap stability. If you do want to go scanning, lose one of those Nosferatus. Then two targeting system subcontrollers, because screw it, if we've got good target on the Praxis 2 anyway, we may as well boost it up even further. 460 millimeter scan resolution there, that is really quite useful. It means we lock on remarkably quick, as you'll see later on. Then for the combat rigs, again, these are all universal 2P combat integrated modules. I've gone for drone speed augmenter, drone firepower augmenter, followed by warhead rigger catalyst and calefaction catalyst. So I'm getting a little bit there in application. Again, if you decide you want to go for rapids, then you can just go calefaction and bay loading accelerator in that instead. And then core defense charge economizer and core defense field extender for the last one. Now, if you didn't want to integrate this, I would basically go for engineering for your um, SSC, your three rigs here. So this side, you'd have your semiconductor memory cell, capacitor control circuit, and then one targeting system subcontroller if you didn't want to integrate. And on this side, I would probably go for ignore the drone ones and just go straight for warhead calefaction, uh, bay loading accelerator, and then a core defense field extender to make things a little bit larger on the shields. And what that's giving me is a flat cold def uh, offense of 1,517.12 with remarkably good application. The defense is pretty solid, 102,749 total EHP. Most of that now is in the shield, thanks to the things. And this is all cold as well before I'm boosting. It's just based on the skills that I have available. We are heavily capacitor stable. You know, we're quite comfortable with our capacitor. Targeting is really quick for us, although the ship is ridiculously slow. So yeah, you do have to kind of handle that. And if you wanted to, I suppose you could put a polycarbon engine housing instead of one of the targeting rigs. But uh, for me, it's not such a big worry. I'm ratting in a home system most of the time um, it, with a standing fleet around me. So if someone were to catch me, I can just call in a support fleet, tank it for as long as possible. I can leave the shield booster running, large shield booster running and everything here. Um, and I will just keep gaining. I think I cap stabil uh, stabilize out around 65, 70% somewhere there. So it is in no danger of running out of capacitor anytime soon. But what if you didn't want missiles? Well, basically, I would recommend training the drone skills, because if you've got drones, you may as well use them, right? And then whatever large weapon system you have, go for the short-range version. I think lasers are probably the weakest of them, but, uh, but auto cannons and snub-nosed are going to do really well. Snub-nosed is actually going to give you monstrous DPS on this thing, um, and I do genuinely recommend that. That is a fun ship to build and fly. For me though, that's the Praxis 2 as it currently stands, let's now talk about fitting it with a nano core.
Due to the hyper expensive nature of the sleeper core, we're going to talk about the Afterglow of Death cores instead. Now, both of these come from that same Omega deal. In fact, shortly after getting the Praxis 1, you get the Praxis Afterglow of Death nano core. Of course, this works on the Praxis 1 and the Praxis 2, and I think it's at 990, if not the final 1080 days of Omega, you'll get the Praxis Afterglow 2 core. These are actually fairly similar. The Afterglow of Death 2 core is naturally slightly better, but it's not far and away. So let's have a look instead at the Praxis Afterglow of Death core 1. So we're going to ignore the usual chat here and have a look. We've got our main attributes here of turret damage, missile torpedo damage, or resonance simulator minimum scan radius. This is the first departure. That If you were to have a look at the Afterglow of Death core 2, there's also drone damage on there. Now, drone damage for me is ultimately going to be the weaker one to go for anyway, because between your high slots and your drones, as you saw, I've got the same skills in both large drones and large missiles, and the large missiles are pulling in a thousand damage, where the drones are pulling in about 400. So, of course, I'm going to go for the missile torpedo damage to give a 19.2% bigger boost to the thing I already have. Now, for appearance customization, I'm going to kind of just skip through this bit because I'm really quite happy with how it looks already. I like the look of the Praxis Afterglow Core 2, so let's just go with that and then confirm because it looks awesome. Save and return, complete customization. It's also amazing that it's one of the few na uh, animated ones out there. It just looks incredible. Anyway, let's complete the customization there so that we can have a look at the rest of it. Because, obviously, we then have our secondaries. Our secondaries give us either power grid or capacitor. Here, I would go capacitor. The power grid is not something we need to worry about at all. We can go up to turret range, missile torpedo vo flight velocity, or drone flight velocity. Here, this is a bit of a weird one. I think drone flight velocity here really should have been drone command range increase. Because we're talking about increasing range of the weapons, um, and that you know, to allow you to be further away. For me, though, again, the turret range or missile torpedo velocity is probably going to be the one that gives you the better um, result of that. Although, if you're using medium rapids, if you're brawling, you might find that the drone flight velocity just helps them apply that a little bit better. Third on the list, shield or armor, whichever you're tanking is the one you go for. We then have resonance simulator minimum scan radius. Ooh, wow, so exciting. Followed by more of the same, or if I just tack the same? No, it is two of the same in a row. Yay! Followed by turret damage, missile torpedo damage, and drone damage. Again, for me, that's going to be the missile damage once we hit that point. But if we were to come out of this completely and instead look at the Praxis 2 core, he says, trying to remember how to actually navigate through all this, and there we are. You can see we've got drone damage as one of our primaries. Otherwise, turrets and missiles are exactly the same as we had before, 19.2. Things do change a little bit after here. Your first level is going to be either capacitor or shield and armor, flat HP. Instead of power grid, they realized it doesn't need more power grid. So they offer you the capacitor boost again or shield or armor. Whichever one you go for, there's up to you. For me, I think that when I finally get this and apply it, I'll probably go shield because capacitors are good enough as is. Having a bit more HP is always nice. Then we get our range again, turret range, flight velocity, or missile torpedo flight velocity. Interesting one here that you get the ship flight velocity. I really don't think that's worth it. Lean into the fact that the Praxis is basically a park and shoot. You you don't really move with it. So again, you this is kind of a non-important stat for a brawler, but hey, there we go. Missile torpedo damage, turret damage, or drone damage, whichever one you go for is up to you. I would recommend the high slot damage, because at the same level of skills, then you're going to get more DPS out of that than you would from the drones, but that's just me. Um, this is an interesting one here as well. Armor repair capacity need, shield boost capacity need, both are really nice and will help you be more cap stable. Scan resolution help you to lock on even faster. Yeah, that's probably the one I'm going to go for. The inertia modifier, again, it's nicer to be able to run away that little bit faster, but it just doesn't do enough. I don't think even 11% onto the inertia modifier we have as it currently stands is going to be enough to really make a difference. Scan resolution, lock things a lot faster, clear things faster, that's where we'd go. Drone damage, turret range, turret damage, missile range, missile damage. Yeah, this is going to be a clear missile damage one. You don't need the range on a brawler, um, and the drone damage is just never going to be as good as your high slot damage. Finally, again, same thing at the bottom there, that same split, but this time, rather than just turret damage, you do also have the confusing railgun cannon and laser damage. Um, 
why you would ever go for those rather than just turret damage. It feels like they're just giving you more things to roll so that you don't get the one you want here, which considering it's the final sub uh, is just, ay uh, yeah, no, that feels really awful. And if you get the Nanocore down this far, good luck to you. But anyway, with that now fitted, you'll see that not only does the Praxis 2 look amazing, but we've actually pushed our DPS over the 1,600 mark, which honestly, I think is really quite powerful. But hey, don't take my word for it, let's showcase it in action. Post recording Benzi here, just coming with a quick interjection, something I completely forgot to mention when it comes to fitting this in different ways. Obviously with implants now being a thing, this means that you can actually benefit from some of the really powerful implants out there. Therefore, if you wanted to fit your Praxis 2 with drones and then say large auto cannons, you could use the barrage suppression implant. Or if you wanted to use rail guns, you've got those there as well. This actually gives the Praxis 2 possibly even an edge over the rattlesnake and I know that's going to be controversial but the rattlesnake has to choose between either some underwhelming drone implants or underwhelming missile implants whereas the Praxis 2 you can take some of the most broken implants in the game apply them to the ship and just go to town with those worth thinking about so this is the Praxis 2 before I put the nano core on it, in a Tech 10 Angel small anomaly. And I know it's only a small, bear with me, I'm still not great on my battleship skills at the moment. And again, it's one of those, oh, but in other battleships you can do, you know, bit larges and mediums easily. Yeah, you probably can with the Praxis. I just wanted to showcase it in a small because that's what I tend to do because they're quick and easy and give decent enough bounty ticks for me at least. Anyway, what, the reason I wanted to show you the end of this wave is just to showcase how quickly this Praxis locks on. Check out how fast, it's not really giving the proper animation there, we're onto the Typhoon already, and there we're onto the frigates. You can see by looking at the actual things on screen, I can tap onto these and already fire very, very fast. Lock on time there. Uh, application's not overly great at this point, but there we are. The missiles still hit for big damage there. The drones are struggling more than anything, because again, the drones don't have the real boosts that they actually need to take these things on. If it's looking at things, you might decide that against angels, you swap one of those Nosferatus for something like a target painter as well. A third web target painter comes out better, even within 15 kilometer range. Um, so yeah, you'll see I do struggle for a brief second here taking out this Gisty Slasher 2, but it does go down um, and I'm just leaving everything running because capacitor is not an issue with this thing. The Thrasher, two in uh, Thrasher 3 interdictor here is going to go down nice and quickly as well, especially when those missiles start firing. Wait for it. Here it comes. And I sent it against the hurricane because I'm an idiot and tapped onto the next thing too soon. But hey, there we go. You can still see that I did a whack of damage to the hurricane. The DPS with missiles is low because their alpha is just insane and they've got a long time. I do also really love the new graphics for the ballistic control units. They look so much cooler now and much easier to realize that you fitted the right thing this time rather than accidentally fitting an eagle tracking computer, activating it and then wondering why your missiles aren't doing more. But hey, there we go. Now, again, that hurricane is taking big damage here from the drones, from the missiles. Um, and away we go. I think in fairness, looking on this footage, I probably should have gone more for the, but not the burst aerator, sorry, bay loading accelerator for the missiles rather than the, uh, uh, the calefaction catalyst because it would give me more missiles to fire within the activation time of those BCUs. But hey, it still gets the job done. Um, it's doing good damage here. Again, I've just left everything running and check my capacitor, still sitting comfortably at 70%. Shield is taking almost no denting at all. You can do a lot higher than this. I've just, I've done other battleship stuff here in a small anomaly, so I kind of wanted to compare it side by side. And obviously now that I've got the nano core fitted as well for the Praxis 2, well, things are going to be even faster because I've got better damage. And I will actually, I quite enjoy this ship. I know that sounds stupid, and I know people are going to say, but Benzie, it's really expensive on the insurance. Yeah, it's not like I'm short of insurance points at the moment. I can bring this back like another 15, 20 times um, without worrying too much about it. Ultimately, 
I might actually even boost up this nano core a bit because I've got a load of combat materials kicking around that I can't use on my other nano cores. Like, what am I going to do? Stealth bomber? Yeah, that's probably the only nano core otherwise that I really actually have an interest in leveling up. Um, obviously, exploration uses the industrial cores, which I didn't realize until recently. So I say obviously it uses this. I didn't even realize. So I've got a load of combat nano core stuff sitting around. I may just pump it into a Praxis too and use that as my, you know, my combat ship. Um, it might sound really controversial, but because of how it looks, I actually kind of prefer flying this to the Rattlesnake. <laughs> yeah, I know the Rattlesnake's better. The Rattlesnake genuinely is better in pretty much every single way. Um, but if I do ever go down my dream of training into large railguns as well, then having large railguns and using snubs on this thing, just that terrifies me. It's a Rattlesnake with snubs instead of missiles, and therefore doesn't have to deal with all the bullcrap of large missile application, and instead can enjoy the beauty that is snub-nosed railgun application. Sorry, hiccup there. Um, <laughs> just, you can see I'm having no trouble at all with this content. It's nice and chill, nice and lax. I can sit and talk to people in uh, in Alliance, in uh, in co uh, Corporation Chat, I nearly called it Union or Guild there. Been playing too much of other games recently. Um, but yeah, having a lot of fun with the Praxis 2. I think genuinely, yeah, it's a niche ship. It's one of those ships that I think a lot of people are going to look at and discard because it is expensive on the insurance points and other ships kind of do it better. But if, like me, you're one of those people who doesn't really care about min-maxing and doing the best ships, you'd rather fly something that looks amazing and, you know, has a bit more fun to it, then, yeah, the Praxis 2's actually surprised me. And I think I'm going to get a lot of people commenting saying I'm wrong on this and I'm a little bit crazy for it, but I really enjoy this ship. I think there is a lot of value to this ship. It's a completely free ship. The Nano Core is completely free as well. You're going to be having Combo Omega anyway. Just by the time you get it, it's worth undocking. I don't think this one's going to become a paperweight in my hangar. I'm actually already using this more than I'm using the Rattlesnake, although I might still use the Rattlesnake in things like Dormant Realms when I finally get round to doing those, because I can do the sniping fit with it, but we'll see. It's just that little bit tankier as well. I don't know, though. I really like this ship. I hope it's given you guys some inspiration. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think on this. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!